Thanks for you. How are you? I'm fine, man. Thank you for joining us this morning. So, my pleasure. Uh, what is your point? What What is the point that you're making in the book? The point that I'm making for you is that uh, as South Africans, we have uh, strengths and weaknesses, and some of those strengths are that our private sector is amongst the best in the world at uh, managing investments, at collecting capital, and we haven't used some of that uh, private sector strength to solve some of our biggest challenges. And uh, we've been relying too much on government to do everything. And what I'm suggesting is that the government regulates in a way that allows private sector to participate in redistribution of wealth in a way that is targeted, direct, and uh, efficient. So I is it your view uh, on the basis of the work that you have done that uh, the relationship between government and private sector is rather undermining our abilities as a country? Absolutely. I think that there is a lack of trust between the two parties. I think that there is not a shared perspective on where both sides are coming from. And I think that uh, the process of uh, achieving economic freedom for South Africans is a shared responsibility on both sides. And sometimes I think private sector doesn't understand the imperative and sometimes government doesn't know how to inspire the right results from private sector. Is that not a natural tension, though? I mean... It is a natural tension, but we are a very young democracy, as you know, and we are not yet uh, experienced in terms of how to work between private sector and public sector in resolving some of these solutions. Many countries around the world have spent years uh, trying to get the right balance, and I yeah. think that we are leaning too much at the moment towards the state doing everything. And what we need to do is to get private sector to own up to some of their responsibilities in a way that uh, is not coercive but uh, is cooperative. It's interesting. I mean, some of your chapters, economic freedom and the Comrades Marathon. Yes. <laughs> What's the link? The link is that uh, the Comrades Marathon was originally a uh, emotionally charged race about the opportunity for all South Africans to participate in an endurance race that allowed for minors, uh, or experienced runners yeah. to uh, run a long distance race and outperform uh, people that have been uh, rather well known at uh, that particular uh, athletic endeavor. And so what I'm saying is that there are comrades of another kind yeah. who have been running another long distance race, which is the race to build the liberation of South Africa. And uh, those guys, similar to people in the Comrades Marathon, the intent was that they would, over time, be able to uh, reach a, um, an ability to win a race towards economic freedom, which they have not. And so as a result of some of the lost intentions, uh, there is a increasing feeling of uh, bitterness and, uh, in fact, animosity towards the original intent. And so you find that uh, people have stopped watching the Comrades Marathon because it's been won yeah. more and more by professional athletes. Yeah. Similarly, we are losing the spirit of uh, economic freedom being won by the ordinary South African, and people are assuming that the race has been rigged in favor of a few people. The teacher crisis, the history of teacher trade unionism in South Africa goes back to the 1900s. Uh, Satu articulates its objectives, we teachers have fully committed ourselves to the transformation of education. Is the teacher crisis housed in the strength of unions in education in South Africa? They're entrenching bad incentives. So my point is that uh, if the incentive given to teachers is that you will not really be improving your own salary yeah. by equipping yourself with training. So those teachers that get a new uh, skill this year by studying part-time, they don't have the ability to be rewarded with an immediate improvement in their salary. It takes away the incentive for teachers to train themselves. And so the collective bargaining principle is admirable, but it can't undermine the incentive to uh, outperform where you were last year. And so all of us come to work uh, because we have competition. We have to be the best at where we can be. Yeah. In South Africa, our teachers are protected and are actually being slowly discouraged from being the best that they can be. Uh, and that's, that's uh, creating some adverse results in terms of the quality of teaching. So with a book, if somebody reads it, what kind of feeling, what kind of idea, what kind of sense do you want them to walk away with? I hope they walk away contextualizing our problems. So we all know what our problems are, but I think what I've tried to do is to frame them in a context that people can understand. And then out of that, we present some solutions in the book that uh, I hope can give people 
either ideas or courage uh, in terms of how to tackle some of our biggest problems because we've got the basics, right? We've got 2.5 trillion worth of infrastructure, which is something that uh, many African countries would die to have. Yeah. What we don't have is uh, a concerted ability to utilize our strengths to resolve the biggest challenges for poor people in South Africa. Yeah. So when your mother discussed with you Ahang, what was your reaction? My reaction was that uh, I think that people like her are duty bound to provide competition to the ANC. And I think that ANC supporters and neutral South Africans should both be happy because this will produce a uh, more competitive political scene that will get the best out of our leaders today and uh, hopefully create a result where people feel like they have to be on their toes yeah. and can't just produce their B game all the time. Yeah. Would you vote for Ahang? Well, I mean, this is an unfair question. Would you vote for your mom? <laughs> <laughs> She's not in politics. <laughs> if she was, you probably would. So I think that uh, I am encouraged by some of the things they're saying. I will evaluate it next year when, uh, when it comes to voting. On the but I'm emotionally, I'm emotionally vested because it's yeah. my mother. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Congratulations on the book. Thank you. Kumelo Biko is uh, also executive chairman of growth capital oriented investment firm called Spinnaker Growth and uh, 13 year career in venture capitalist. He's also a dedicated philanthropist, a proud South African. Thank you very much for your time Thank this you. morning.